Hey, this week on Larry Smith Outdoors, we're fishing, guess where? My home waters back to Lake Winnebago. And you know what? We're into the fall pattern here. The fishing actually has been pretty decent this fall. Normally, most of the time in the fall, we're up in the rivers fishing, but right now we've had a really good shad hatch, which we haven't had in the last three years, which is definitely well needed for these fish to survive, especially through the winter and then our young of the year. But there's a lot of shad again. Our forage levels are starting to come up. Now we're getting back to where we need to be in the system. And uh, we're gonna go out and see if we can catch a bunch of walleyes, a bunch of white bass. And we've got our good friend, Phil Dominic. Hey, yeah, Phil. All right, lucky, lucky Phil. So we should have a great day. The weather is unbelievable. So, hey. What more can we ask for? Let's go out and catch a bunch of fish and see what happens. Good old bagel, you gotta love it. You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about we finally got some really good forage hatches and hopefully the, the, the main bunch of fish will stay out in the main lake. The problem is the last couple of years as these fish have migrated back up in the upper part of the system because that's where the forage was. And you get so many guys fishing like on Poygan and they absolutely decimated these fish. The problem is, again, I always say this and I love to work with our biologists here on this system because we got some really good biologists, but their theory and my theory are a little bit different. Hopefully someday we can meet in the middle, but I just want to see some kind of size limit I used to say um, I would want a slot limit, and I th personally think a slot limit would be the ideal thing, but right now at the point that we're at, I'd be content with any kind of size limit. We need some kind of protection on this system. You know, it's, it's a world, it has potential to be a world-class walleye fishery, and it's really a good fishery, but there's so much pressure out on these bodies of water, and there's so many of these fish that get kept here that, I can't imagine if we put a size limit or a slot limit on it, what kind of system we'd have here. Again, I think it would be world class for sure. It's hard to believe, but we're almost into October and we're still using night crawlers. The water temperature warm back up. And I usually stop using crawlers once that water temperature gets, uh, you know, anything below below 60 degrees, then I'll switch to minnows and, and a lot of artificials. And what I always like to do is I always like to use half a crawler or a lot of times we we'll use the meat products too, and just a half of it or a third of, of the crawler there works out good. And basically what we're doing is we're gonna, right now we're going across this reef, and most of the time the fish are on the windward side, that's the forward side, so if all the rocks, you know, if the high spots are right here and we've got a south wind, we're starting up on the way south side of it, and we're gonna let the boat come back like this. The jigs do not need to be tight to bottom. You gotta think about this. When you're out here on this system now with all the zebra mussels, and you know, zebra mussels are like razor blades. So two things, if you're not dragging the bottom tight all the time, they're gonna cut your line up, you're gonna lose a ton of jigs. The other thing is that, think about, the walleyes are not gonna lay real tight to, to ooh, I just missed one, to bottom with all them zebra mussels down there because their bellies would get cut up. So they're, they're off the bottom, usually nowadays about three to six inches most of the time, if not higher, up in the water column. And what I do is once I feel a fish hit it, I don't give them line, I just pull them along. And what happens, every place you fish is a little bit differently, even though it's the same species. What I do is actually let them load up on the rod. I'm using all mono. I don't use a lot of fire lines or, or, or super braids when I'm dragging like this on this system. It, it just seems like the fish will feel it too much and they will end up dropping it. So I like to use all mono, usually six pound test, and I let them load up on it. So I'll let them actually hang on there for about anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds before I set the hook on it. Here we go. First one of the day, let's see what we got here. Again, small walleye, you know, that's the part about this system now, you know, that's only about a 12 incher, and I'll guarantee you something, there's a lot of guys that would keep that fish. But that's, again, one of the reasons why, when you have a system like this, 
it's always nice to protect us. This is, and this is one of the very few systems in the whole country that don't have any kind of size limit or any kind of regulations on it at all. So they're all fun to catch. Let's let this one go back and try it again. But I got yeah, something, yeah. something pulling on my string. I'm happy. Double. Here we go, Phil. Come on, let's see who's got what. There. I got. pulling on my string. I don't care. If it I got a walleye, like buddy. And you got, you got a sea pig. I got a bubba, yay! You got the bubba. When you can come out and catch fish like this, and again, this is, this is what needs to be protected. Again, you know, there's a, I don't know, let's say a 12 inch, or that's about what that is at the, at the most. And a lot of guys would keep that fish. And so again, all we need is a little protection. We could have a world class fishery here. But I love catching fish, even sheephead. Bill, I don't mind catching them either. The, th the thing that gets me though is that guys will keep this in smaller sizes and it's just amazing that uh, they don't have at least a 15 inch size limit which would protect a lot of fish and we have a lot more of them. But anyway. And Phil, you know, you've, you've pretty much lived on this lake for how long? I mean, your mom had a place here on the South Shore. You've, you bought her place, or your grandmother had a yeah, place, then your mom and dad, yeah. Yeah, for almost 60 years I've been on this lake. And the thing that's really unbelievable to me is that they've given all the benefit to the fishermen and zero to the fish. What do you mean by that, Phil? Well, when I first started fishing here, 10 years old, and you know I fished all over the country, I don't think, I don't believe drift, uh, trolling was allowed. It was just motor drifting. Trolling. Motor trolling right. was not allowed. Right. So they allow motor trolling. Then what do they do? They come up with the boards and stuff that you can use out there. Then what do they do? They go from two rods, which to me is fine per person. They make it three rods per person. Right. They then come out with the GPSs, and there's more fishermen now more than ever. Right. Because they get these GPSs, and everybody's a fisherman now, where before we had to go out there with the uh, closet dowel rods and try to line up a silo with a house and try to find these reefs. Well, now everybody can find them with no problem, right. even the little branches off them. But it just gets me that they've improved so much for the fishermen, and yet they don't protect these fish at all. It's right. ridiculous. Uh, lake Erie, protected fish. Every lake I fish in Canada, every lake in Minnesota, all of Green Bay, Wisconsin, every place has got a size limit for a slot and even cuts it down in the spring. Not Winnebago, it's like their attitude is kill them all, we don't care. I mean, it's like amazing to me how somebody can keep a six, eight inch walleye right. or a 30 inch walleye. I just can't comprehend it and yet they're still fishing this water, but if they keep it up, it's not gonna be many. All right, here's one. Well, you're nope. being grown, buddy. Little, little stinker again. I need a big one. Boy, is this a little stinker. Look at that. What a nice, nice eater. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I'm loving this stuff. This feels like a better fish. Oh yeah. This is a nice fish. Definitely a nice fish. Oh, look at this walleye. Look at that, look at the size of that, that is a nice fish. You know, unfortunately, I'm fishing with Phil the blind guy and he's not a very good netter, so I'm gonna have to net him myself. You know what, that is what we're talking about right there. That's about a 17, 18 incher. Look at that, look how fat that fish is. Now you can tell that our forage levels are absolutely come back just perfectly. And look at that fish, that is absolutely, it's probably about a 17 incher right there. That's an absolutely beautiful fish, I'll tell you that. This is my favorite system, I'm gonna tell you guys. If we can get some, get some slot limits or size limit on this, we could come out there and you could catch fish like this every day, consistently year after year. You know what I'm gonna do with this one? I'm gonna put it back in the drink and catch it another day. Look at that, Woo, gone, love it. What do you got, Bill? I got him know. on the plastics, too. Ooh, oh. whitey, all right. I love catching white bass. You start catching them, I'm gonna switch over to the plastic. Ooh, I just had one, too. All right, I got one, Phil. Look at the size of that white bass, too. I love catching white bass through the ice. It's probably one of my favorite things to catch. And I don't mind catching them this time of year, either. You know, this time, what's going on here is that you can see the gulls 
coming down and, and grabbing the shad and what happens is that the white bass will school up the shad and push them to the surface and then the gulls come down on them so they're really easy to find but uh, yeah they're a lot of fun to catch and they're not too bad to eat if you want to eat some fish. <laughs> You know, I tell you, we're in the bay here. I was casting for walleyes, just came in here, but the white bass are in here too thick. And another one. I just have, I'm just casting a jig with a crawler, so if Phil's got some plastics on here, so if I keep getting them, I'll probably just go with a Kalen's, a Kalen's grub on there and start casting that Kalen's for them. You know what, when it comes to fishing, I always say this. The wind, what happened is we had a great bite. The first couple passes, we caught a bunch of walleyes, and the wind died down out there. And I said, let's go in the bay and try the weeds, because there's quite a few weeds up right now still. Uh, coontail, and let's try for some walleyes in here. But right now, the white bass are so thick in here, you can't even get the, the bait down to the bottom. There's one. Hello. The white right. bass run. The white <laughs> bass run. <laughs> yeah, they're not little stinkers either. They're nice white bass. Them are nice ones, yeah. I was kind of worried that the white bass population was down, because we really didn't have a very good, good run this spring. No, Larry, I do a fair amount of fishing on Lake Mead out by Vegas. And yeah. We get some nice uh, 12, 15 pound stripers, but uh, little stinkers really know how to fight too. Yeah, they're all fun to catch, aren't they? Yep. <laughs> My turn. All right. Gotta love it. You catch the whiteies, I'll try for the walleye. Uh oh. Get up here. Come on. Got a good one? Oh, that's a nice oh, oh god. That's a tank. Hold that one up, Phil. That's Hold it up, I should get them in. Good to see them. <laughs> them older white bass like that. Nice chunkers. Kinda like that. I don't know whose belly's bigger. I know, I still win. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go. Okay, Whitey, goodbye. Let see me you. see your see plastic. You in the Got something going here. You know what we did? We kind of lost our wind, and uh, now we're flatline trolling. And what am I getting? Oh, when you, when you have no wind, you got to create wind. Nice little white bass. And what I did, we're basically just flatlining. We're trolling about one six to two miles an hour, and just going over these rocks, trying to pick up on some walleyes. Of course, I just got a white bass here. And uh, it's a good way to cover a lot of water, especially, I don't really like to troll a lot unless it's for muskies, but I don't mind the flatline trolling where you're hanging onto the rod and actually doing something. So, not a walleye, but still a good fighter. Here we go. You know, Phil, this is kind of a lazy way to fish. I'm kind of, I'm kind of enjoying this. Flatline troll, I remember doing a lot of this. Flatline, yep, trolling myself. No, with my dad. Everybody uses board, and I like it. I sure certainly like when you can feel that hit fish hit hit that bait like this. Like I said, our wind laid down. Boy, I tell you, the first couple casts or passes this morning with that wind, we were catching walleyes like crazy, and then it died down and a few white bass. But now we're picking back up on them. All right. Complaints with this weather. No, this is for this time of year. We'll take this. It'll be cold soon enough. I'm hoping for a walleye, Phil, but I'll take anything. He doesn't? Ooh, I got a big bass. I think mine's bigger, Phil. Oh, I don't know. Holy schmoly, you might have me a little bit. I love to see again that we have a lot of these adult white bass around still because I know the hatches have not been that good the last couple of years. Get back in the drink with mine, buddy. Yeah. Those troubles, the blind guy has some problems with. Ooh, that is a big one. Yeah, I, I suppose, Phil, being blind and trouble hooks probably don't go so well. No, it's probably two troubles. Right, I don't feel like problem. taking any out of your finger. <laughs> Phil, I got another one. Hey, look at what I caught. I got the salad. For you me, got bro. the salad. I got the salad. For I got the meat. I'm more of a meat and potato kind of guy myself. <laughs> one more white bass and no walleye. I'm going back to my jig and a crawler. Nothing wrong with white bass, but. I want the walleye. Here we go. Eat. 
There we go. Now that's a little bit better. I guess if you're looking at fish to keep. Oops. He's in my low kick. Please go. <laughs> that walleye came off the hook. Fell right into my, went right to my low care. Now he's underneath there. I'd leave him in there, but I think he's going to really smell him by probably spring come. I just dismantled my whole boat. I was wondering where that spray went. I was wondering what happened to that issue. Oh, a bag of chips, too. Hey, it's still good, too. I know I better get him before he dies. I won't let him go. I told my wife I lost this hat. <laughs> no, he's still good. Sorry, poor guy. Let me wash him off a little bit. There's his buddy in there. You gonna live? Oh, get out of here. I hate to see if that fish goes down there and tells, tells his buddies what he just experienced. But look at this mess I got here now. Well, Phil. I'll be preoccupied here for a couple minutes. Keep fishing. Oh, giant walleye. I knew that. Giant fish. Not giant, but for here, very nice fish. We just came up on this hump, you guys. And I just cast it. Look at this. That's a nice fish. Oh, I thought that for Winnebago is a very, very nice fish, especially to be caught out, out on the rock. What we did here is the wind absolutely laid down. We tried flatline trolling, caught a bunch of white bass, couldn't catch a walleye. And I said, you know, when you look at this and the wind lays right down, what I like to do is find these rock piles, humps, reefs, wherever you want to call them, that are smaller and have a lot of deep water around them. And that's what I did. I came out here, I've got, I'm on a rock pile now. It's a small rock pile. That was the first cast, I'm right up on top of it. We stopped the motor 100 yards before we got to it. I used the, the Tarova, got up on top of it, hit the spot lock, and just I'm pitching off to the deeper side of it and bringing it up, up the slope here. And this is what happens. Look at that. That is absolutely a beautiful walleye. And again, you know, you look at the build on these fish now that we've got some good forage back in the system. Look how thick that fish is. That's about an 18 inch or 19 incher. And for here, that's, I mean, there's a lot of big fish in this system, but when you start fishing rocks, normally you don't catch a lot of the bigger ones this time of year. It's mostly, you know, 12 to, you know, 18, 19 inches is, is getting pretty big. Uh, again, just an absolutely beautiful fish. You know, when it flattens out like it did, what I like to do is I went to a smaller jig. Now, I just threw on a 16th ounce jig again, half a crawler, and I'm using my spot lock, and now I'm hitting these smaller humps that have deeper drops to them, which is real important when you don't have a lot of wind. And the fish aren't gonna be near as, as active. Walleyes, I always look at walleyes as to be a real lazy fish for the most part. They want everything just presented to them just perfectly. And when you have a lot of turbulence in the water, it makes it real easy for them to feed and to sneak up on, on bait fish and ambush them. But when it calms down like it is now and everything's flat and it's real still, nothing's moving down there, is that you go with a smaller bait and you drag it real slow and you almost got to drag it right past their nose and pull it real slow in for them to bite. So that's the key is basically like the hump is right here. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just pitching back as far as I can, letting it sink, giving the jig, you know, I'm pitching back to about 10 and a half feet right here. I'm sitting in about five and a half here, pitching it back there, and I'm dragging it super slow. And when I do feel them pick up on it, what I do is I'll wind back down and I'll give them just about a half a pull, pull them along. And what that does is when you're pulling them like that, give them that extra pull instead of setting a hook right away, is when you're, because when you're dragging like this, what's gonna happen, the walleye's gonna come up behind it, he's gonna grab the back of that crawler, and if you set the, the hook right away, you're gonna come up with no crawler and no fish. So what you wanna do is when you feel them, let them load up on it, and give them another half a pull, and then when he loads up on it, then set the hook into him. But re I'm jigging super slow. I can feel every one of them rocks, and I'm lifting all, instead of keeping your rod tip down like this, remember what I said earlier, all the zebra mussels on the bottom, the fish aren't laying real tight. So what you want to do is you always want to lift up to get in front of their, their eyes so they can get a visual on it and grab it. So you're always lifting up and then I'm letting it fall back down, lifting it up, letting it fall back down. That's the key to it. A lot of times 
what happens is people like to use too heavy of a jig and the fish, the jig is always going to be constantly grinding through your, the bottom, your, your snag all the time and the fish just, the walleyes aren't going to pick it up and if they do pick it up, they're going to feel that heavy weight and they're going to drop it. So try to always go as light as you, you can with your jig. 16th and 8th ounce jigs I use probably about 75% of the time when I'm out here either casting or drifting. The only time that I'll bump it up if it's super rough and you got to be able to control that jig, so then I'll bump it up a little bit and go from there. Here we go. Another fish. Oh, another one. Little guy. Gosh, I tell you, you know what's amazing? The year class is on these fish again that are out here. That is just a peanut. You know, and again, there's no size limit on these fish. And, we see a lot of guys keeping them because the law is they can, but it really wouldn't be right to kill a fish like that for sure. We got somebody pulling us in a big bubble. Baker, Baker, double Laker. I got bubba. a big bubble. Bubble, 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 Time. Channel cat. Another yeah, channel cat. Whoa, yeah. we've caught enough of these today. Oh, yeah. And I don't mind catching these up, up any. No big ones though, but they're still no. fun. That was still fun. He had me wondering there for a while while he was fighting deep. They're all fun, Phil. These fish. Pretty fish too. Meow. Bye kitty. Meow. I'm glad that thing didn't fall inside my boat, I'll tell you that. Here we go. This feels like a pretty good fish. Oh yeah, that's a Boy, I'll tell you, and I actually had him look pretty good. You know, again, look at the build on these fish in this system. With them forage levels being up the way they are, these fish are really stocky. That guy go. You know, I was just thinking about something a couple minutes ago, Bill. What's that? The next time people see us on this boundary water, Lake Winnebago, yep. it'll be froze like a rock. You'll be in Nevada where it's like 150 degrees. You know what? And I'm going to be out here ice fishing. I know, and I'm going to be jealous of you. You know, buddy, we had a good day. Yes, we Caught did. a lot of As fish, always. a lot of walleyes, a lot of white bass. You know what? This has always been, I grew up on this lake, and it's always been one of my favorite places to fish. And uh, you know what? I was thinking to myself, like I always say, good day to be alive. I still never figure out how you can fish two poles and devour food without missing a beat and still re hook a worm on it. I have no idea I don't. I, I can't imagine after all the years how much worm guts slime. No doubt that worms aren't toxic because I would have been dead a long time ago. When I die, I should probably give donate my body to research science. Because maybe if I lived to be like 140, they'll wonder why. And it wasn't from eating yogurt, it was from eating worm guts. Think about that. I might be on yourself. Dad, what are you doing? Hey, it was a tough day today fishing on Lake Winnebago, but I can't think of a better way to wind down and relax and sharpen my skills than reading the Badger Sportsman. It's a far from working experience.